Yo, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to consistently carry your games on Kha'Zix like a pro, minimize risk, and maximize the upside. Kha'Zix can start on either side of his jungle. Since the enemies were pushing towards my bot side, it's way too risky to start there. Kha'Zix level 1 is extremely weak compared to many champions level 1s to where we wouldn't really want to fight this into a Rengar Jin Nidalee. That's pretty scary. The best rune page possible on Kha'Zix at the moment is First Strike with Magical Footwear, Futures Market, Cosmic Insight, Sun Impact with Treasure Hunter, alongside Double Adaptive and Armor. Kha'Zix has two really strong builds. The first one is to rush down Ravenous Hydra into Eclipse, then and Surled's Grudge. This one is by far the more consistent and you can play it versus squishies or tanks and get pretty good results because Eclipse has max health damage on it, a speed up and a shield. The second build option is to go for Prowlers into Yomu's then Edge of Night. This build is geared primarily towards killing squishies and plays best if you already have a frontline on Kha'Zix. This game I opted for the first build because it is overall better right now. Ravenous Hydra is extremely overtuned. Once that's brought back in line, it'll give more cadence and more legitimacy to the second build of Rushing Prowler's first item. If you don't get a leash on Kha'Zix, you'll be finishing around 330. If you do get a leash, you'll be finishing somewhere around 325, similar to a Master Yi. It's good to use your smite on your first camp as long as it's around 600 health and not too much lower. That way you can get to level 2 and take your next camp quite a bit faster rather than idling on level 1. Kha'Zix is pretty decent in particular for season 13 because you can no longer dual take any camps on any jungler, not even fiddlesticks. This is perfect for Kha'Zix because he never wanted to take multiple camps at once because that'll take away from his isolation damage. So taking blue and Gronk at the same time wouldn't even make sense to do. This gives him a bit of an edge over other junglers who used to rely on that heavily. You pretty much always want to do a linear full clear starting out on Kha'Zix. That way you can gear towards getting your level 6 as soon as possible and as safely as possible. Kha'Zix is 1 versus 1, pre-6 isn't great, his ganks pre-6 aren't great, and his 2v2s aren't great, so there's no reason to try to level 3 cheese gank or to look for an invade on the enemy jungler since Kha'Zix can't solo most junglers pre-6. Once again, things like Mundo, Morakaiser, Nocturne, Shivana, Warwick, Lee Sins, and Zhao, the list goes on and on, destroy Kha'Zix solo pre-6. So there's no reason to coin flip that when we know for a fact at 6 with the Q upgrade we can destroy them very easily. While you're clearing on Kha'Zix you want to try to get the monsters down to only the big one left. That way you can get the sweet isolation damage on your Q. So against the wolves you typically kill the small ones first. Against the raptors usually the whole camp will die at once because they're all pretty squishy and against the Krugs, you want to try to kill the big one on its own with your Q so it's okay to smite the smaller one to get there faster and then you can pop your w to get rid of the tiny ones quickly that way you can get back to business and get the sweet isolation damage on your q after your full clear you typically either look for a gank or go straight for the scuttle crab because that's around the time you'll be finishing scuttle spawns in at 3 30. if you're pathing away from the enemy jungler like we are here since we path from top side of our jungle to the bottom most likely you won't have to deal with the enemy jungler, which is good because Kha'Zix can't solo most enemy junglers pre-6. In this case, we can walk out, take it pretty safely. We do want to hold on to E though, just in case she shows up, we can escape or maybe even chase her down if we have more HP. Nidalee isn't a horrible matchup for Kha'Zix, but at the same time, if she kites it out properly, even pre-6, she can be a huge issue. You don't really use your E very much to help you clear your camps, especially past the first clear because it's a long cooldown and it leaves you vulnerable to dying. After Scuttle Crab, look at the two closest lanes and see if either of them are gankable. For a moment here, it was looking kind of gankable, but then Katarina lost way too much HP. Yone is just as fast, if not faster than us right now, so this makes no sense to gank. If we show up, Yone's either going to kill Katarina or he's just going to escape. Nidalee could show up since we know she's going to be on top scuttle crab making the situation extremely risky low reward and it would delay our next full clear on your first back purchase as much of the ravenous hydra as you can afford typically looking for the pickaxe into team at if you can while farming i look at the two closest lanes whether that's directly or on the mini map i saw rengar was gankable so we came up from slightly behind at an angle, waited till he engaged on the Nasus, then we can fold in on it. As long as you come up from behind the enemies, just walk up, hit him with an auto attack Q, and then you can use your dash after they dash away or flash. So here, this whole time, we're able to attack him because we didn't lead in with our jump since we already had his escape cut off. We did have to use Ghost to close out the kill, but that's totally fine and can be expected in a lot of situations on Kha'Zix before you have any items or boots. Ghost has a much higher carry potential than Flash since it is a lower cooldown and you get extensions on kills and assists to where one kill on Kha'Zix plus with his jump resets, he is absolutely disgusting in team fights. I spam ping the dragon for my teammates to ward it because I saw Nidalee was in the area. They don't do a very good job of it though, so it does end up going to the enemy team. It wouldn't make sense for me to rush out there and try to fight it, 
being a pre-6 Kha'Zix trying to deal with the Nidalee, I don't have boots. It's just not going to work. On top of that, Ezreal is extremely low on health and mana, so there's really nothing for us to fight over there while Katarina is also losing mid prio. If you know deep down you're going to lose the fight, don't fight it. The enemies will make a mistake eventually, or you'll hit your power spike and you'll be able to scale. In this case, it's our level 6 on Kha'Zix for the Q evolution. You never want to show yourself to the enemies for free as a jungler. It gives them way too much knowledge, and then it can let them pressure you. In this case, they knew my blue buff was coming up. It turned gray, said so they knew it was up in a minute. It turned yellow, they knew it was up in 10 seconds. So they already figured I was going to be on this side of the map anyway. So crossing over to get there faster in this situation is fine. But generally, don't show yourself on the map unless you absolutely have to as a jungler. When it comes to securing kills, don't be shy about it. Kha'Zix has absurd carry potential. It's a lot like playing a Master Yi to where you can do a lot more with the gold than your teammates can. That doesn't mean blow your flash or ghost to steal a kill your teammate 100% has, but if there's a good chance the enemy can escape, don't be shy about taking the kill. Here I have the option of invading Nidalee's red buff or resetting. I'm sitting on so much gold, I wouldn't want to stay for Nidalee's red buff. If Rengar has R or anything like that, he could easily kill us around all those red buff bushes while I'm fighting with just a pickaxe so it made sense to back defend my own red buff and play off of that we're level six and up so we do have the q evolution 100 percent of the time go q evolution on kha'zix first before anything else because it gives you absurd damage your q goes on a 45 percent reduced cooldown whenever the target is isolated so you get to giga spam it it gives you so much solo potential and it lets you take dragons honestly faster than shivana as well so you're a huge dragon solo threat to where the enemies they can't leave it up or at least they have to have it warded i'm trying to get as close to the wall as possible to get the minion xp over the wall as they die to the turret after i finish the camp we hop over and try to force fight on the yon he's foolish enough to turn around i slow him with smite we tag him with an q and an auto attack and down he goes optimally you would want to auto attack and then q because your q has more range than your autos on top of that Whenever the enemies lose sight of you, your next auto attack against them will slow them. So if you're in a situation where you Q first, even when you're in range to auto, a lot of the times they end up getting away because they're not slowed. In this case, I Q'd first because he was faster than me and I thought that was all I was going to be able to get off, but he's foolish enough to turn around and so we killed him. After killing Yon, going for Herald would be a great option. However, Rengar was in the area and had us cut off to where going for Herald was a little bit too risky while Katarina was in base. I see bot lane scrapping it up, so I path over there. Plus, I have Crux coming up bot side and I only have Gromp Wolves up top side, so even if I went top here, I wouldn't have much more opportunity in terms of farming versus the bot side while still having the option to gank. I use R to speed up and go invisible and Ghost to speed up as well, lead in with an E. By the way, you can Q in midair on your E, so feel free to do that as you're approaching the enemies or jumping away from them. We get Ghost extensions from getting the kill on Lulu, which will allow us to run them down over this extended space. Here we did the correct thing, which was to lead in with an auto attack for the slow from our passive, into a Q on Italy. She then jumps away. I have an auto attack on Jin, which probably wasn't needed. We rush down the Nidalee with an auto attack Q reset, and then we can't really finish the Jin because he's too close to under his turret and we don't have anything left over. With any sum but ghost there, we would have at best only have gotten Lulu and would not have gotten a double kill. Kha'Zix is all about snowballing, which makes Ghost and its extensions extremely juicy on him. Once you are level six and up and have your Q evolved, which will happen anywhere from the six minute mark to eight minute mark, depending on how well you're playing and how much you're farming, you can start to solo dragons right as they spawn in and devour them with your Q without really losing much HP at all. Pre-6, you really shouldn't even be taking dragons on Kha'Zix because it's risky, you'll lose a lot of HP, and even if it is safe, you're delaying your level 6 by so much by staying there to do the dragon that it's just not quite worth it. Just wait till you're 6, then take the dragons. Straight after dragon, I rushed over to Herald since I'm ahead, level 6 and up, and all my buffs are down, it makes sense. On top of that, Nasus has some lane prior, so I'm not worried about getting 3-man collapse here. With that being said, I'm still going to plot Herald just to be safe. I see Nidalee coming, and I see Yon coming. It doesn't matter, though. I have R, Q, and a huge item advantage. Yon doesn't even have a full item, and he's stepping up to fight us. Since he is so deep on us, I go ahead and lead in with Q to get it on a lower cooldown, and then I auto-attack. If someone's going deep on you, you don't have to lead in with auto for the slow, because they're not trying to run away anyways to where I would rather the slow come second. That way, when they do try to run, they won't be able to. And then, of course, we save our E for when we can no longer reach him with our autos and Qs. And we're also able to block his R with this to where he has no chance to escape. Since Yon's dead, Harold is even safer to take now. There's no reason for us to leave. Even if Rengar and Italy collapse, Katarina is here with me. It's turning into a bit of a fiesta. I don't think this Italy knows what she should be doing. Going to Harold, the contest was kind of okay. If we didn't have an item lead, but since we did have one and then Yon died, now it just doesn't make any sense for her to be here. 
it's a super high risk play for her. Jump over the wall, secure the kill on Rengar, and then we can go back for the Herald. At the end of the day, yes, Kha'Zix is a kill heavy champion, but kills don't win you games. What kills do is allows you to establish your lead and then take every single objective when they come up. That's what kills do, because even if you have 10 kills, if you die once, they'll get a thousand shutdown gold off of you. If you die again, they'll get a thousand shutdown gold off of you. And all of a sudden, after one or two mistakes, they're just as fed as you are. What did those kills do? Nothing, because all it did was allow for pressure that you squandered. The pressure is to get the objectives. I decided to prolong Harold to come kill Rengar as he's coming in between his turrets. Yes, this kill doesn't really change anything. However, I wanted to punish Rengar in Italy. For wasting my time when I was trying to take Harold earlier, so this was a bit of a punitive punishment type of thing. And since Rengar is dead, Harold's even safer to take. If someone collapses, we're perfectly fine. Sitting on huge sums of gold is typically a bad idea, and you shouldn't do it. The only exception is is if you can honestly say you can still solo anyone on the map. It doesn't even matter you haven't spent your gold because if someone pulls up on you or if you gank them, you'll be able to crush them anyways. The upside to that is you get to stay on the map, absorb more resources and be in more situations rather than recalling and waiting in base. So instead I invaded our jungle, took the camps, then I looked for the reset and spent my gold advantage. Now we can play even more aggressive, maybe do some dives with this huge gold lead rather than playing off of some safer stuff. I went for E evolution second, because of three main criteria. One, your E is a massive carry tool if you're very fed since it's resets. Resets on any champion allows them to potentially 1v9. Two, they have a double range backline and your E gives your jump more range. And three, my team's front line is bigger than theirs. If their front line's bigger than yours, then you have to go W evolutionary second to get a big AOE slow and damage on the whole enemy team. Just like in the early game, we don't wanna waste our jump for no reason. We already have the cutoff route on Rengar and Yon, so we might as well walk them down and hold on to jump as an outplay tool or to use it when we can no longer reach them with our autos or Q. Since we have E evolution, I go ahead and use it to secure the kill on Rengar, then we can jump behind the Yon to block his potential R if he still has it. We can no longer reach him, so we use R speed up, auto attack Q reset, finish him off. We look for the kill on Italy, find it. We finish her off with E while Q's on cooldown, and then we can jump away with our E reset once again off of kills and assists. Kha'Zix's W is the same speed as his E, so you can W and then E onto a target, especially if it's stationary, standing in brush or channeling an ability like Jin is here. I launch my W, jump out with E, Q him in midair, land, and then he dies. Now we can jump away with the E resets, we're good to go and can take Dragon. Even when you're fed on any jungler, including Kha'Zix, in a perfect world, you're getting a pick or two and then taking dragon. Cause imagine you're fed Kha'Zix, you just start dragon randomly, your team's in base and then you get five man collapsed on. Whenever you do things, you want it to make sense and there needs to be much higher reward than risk. If you find yourself thinking about things and you're like, wait, this is way riskier than the reward, don't do it. That's how you improve at League of Legends. Just minimize the risk, maximize the reward. And if you can do that just a little bit, especially in the early game, you'll be able to build up a lead and destroy your opponents. That is the key. If you make lots of risky stuff early game, odds are it won't pan out. You start falling behind and then it's very, very challenging to play from the back foot rather to play from neutral or from ahead. And yes, there will be games when your teammates are just perma losing lane, but even in those situations, there's typically still plays you can make to make sure you don't fall behind in XP and you can still hit your level six on time, which is gonna allow you a lot of carry potential. Oftentimes when you're ahead, there will be a number of people on the enemy team who get frustrated and will try to kind of rage split push. This Rengar falls into that category. We have blue jungle smite, so he can't get away. Every time we touch a brush, we get a massive speed up and you can even get that out of the same brush if you go in and out of it. In this case, we had three different brushes to step into, so he had no way of really escaping, even without us having our W evolution for the slow. Blue jungle item gives Kha'Zix the most options. If you want to play more as a bruiser, which isn't necessarily viable right now, you'd look more for conquer and green jungle item. Playing with red jungle item, I think just isn't as viable and not as necessary. 4% max health true damage is pretty much nothing when you consider Kha'Zix does half of a squishy's health. Currently, the enemies are starting to turtle up and play underneath their turret, hoping that we'll dive them and throw our shutdown gold. The best thing you can do when the enemies start to turtle up underneath one turret is to get your teammates to split the other lanes so you can have victims who are no longer packed together underneath a turret. Another option is if you're ahead enough, you can force a 5v5 Baron fight, a 5v5 Dragon fight, 
or continuously poke away at the edges of the enemy's jungle, for example, go for their Krugs or Gromp instead of their Raptors or Wolves, which is closer to their turret, putting you at a higher risk of dying. Rengar is looking for a pick. We have the E Evolution, pop him with an auto attack Q, then we can jump on top of the Lulu, we get her flash. This is staggering them pretty hard and we can look for a free Baron here or take camps and turrets. Ultimately, Baron's function is to allow you to take their turrets if they have insane wave clear, things like a Ziggs, a Zerath, Varus, Vel'Koz, Lux, those type of things. If you can already take turrets and inhibs safely, Baron doesn't really perform a function. The enemies are throwing for some gold. They want some shutdown, hop over the wall, kill Nidalee into jump resets. I look for the auto attack Q on the Jin for the slow. If he went in for a Q, not only would it not have killed him, but then he would have been far outside of our auto attack range for us to land our passive slow on them. If enemies are too close to their turrets or allied champions or minions, you will not get your isolation damage from Q, which is super valuable because that is pretty much 70% of Kha'Zix's total damage output. Here, Dragon's about to spawn, so I'm waiting to cut off enemies and kill them on their way. I'm also standing neutral in between bot and mid, so giving myself more options in terms of who I can kill based off of who's out of position. You'll see supports do this whenever they want to roam. Typically, they'll base run down towards mid lane, and then they can look either top, mid, or bot and decide which gank makes the most sense. So in this case, I was standing in between mid and bot. I could choose on those, go for dragon, give, just trying to maximize options since we're ahead and we have our E up. So even if they did collapse, even if it was worded, we could escape, but you can always check out the bushes with your oracles. So you'll know for sure. The only dragon we gave up this game was the one that happened pre six because Kha'Zix is kind of crappy pre six and it's not worth fighting, coin flipping and playing from a disadvantage that early in the game. You might as well hit six, be at the advantage, and press the enemies from there. There's no objective over here, so overall, this is pretty greedy. We go in, pop the Lulu, we have jump resets. Instead of jumping away, I jump straight into the turret, got Jin snared, and end up dying. This is exactly why playing for objectives is so important, because the only way they could have ever killed us was a situation just like this. We would have had to take turret damage, we would have had to waste jump, and they would all have to be there basically underneath turret. So instead, if we play towards objectives, guess what? There's no turret on top of Baron. There's no turret on top of Dragon. And we never run into that issue. After getting the kill on Lulu, I should have just jumped away and then Baron would have been 99% secured and ultra safe. Whenever you're ahead, if you can get a pick on the enemy team and then do Baron, they have less than a 1% chance of making that fight work. If you're taking the Baron 5v5 when you're ahead, it's more like a 10 to 30% chance things can go bad, whether they steal the Baron or if they get a couple of shutdown golds. So after killing Lulu, there was really very little reward and ultra high risk for going deeper. So that was just a horrible miscalculation on my part and a greedy limit test. People can't get away with split pushing or taking map pressure against a fed Kha'Zix. You just walk up, auto attack Q, got your big jump to run them down and the jump resets to kill multiple people if someone tries to back them up. The best thing the enemies could do is just five man stack underneath turret and wait for us to try to dive. But ultimately that's a losing strategy as long as we keep taking dragons and barons because once we have dragon soul, we could probably 5v5 dive them underneath turret if we really wanted to or just leave Nasus on the split indefinitely and then they wouldn't have a good reaction to that because they can't send any single person to match the Nasus. If you can tell you're about to get a kill in a team fight, make sure you activate your ghost so you can get your extensions. We jump in on the Rangar, Q in midair auto attack reset on him and down he goes we hit Jin with the w jump on him with jump resets and we're moving really fast off a of ghost unfortunately with lulu giga peeling for him speeding him up twice shielding him and ring him and Jin flashing we're not able to kill him and then wipe the rest of his team ghost does give you that pressure though to where if he didn't have flash or if they didn't have lulu we would have probably killed their whole team there. Right now, there's no dragon or baron, so there's nothing to really back off and take other than farming our own jungle. I go ahead and pull out because things are getting a bit messy. It's better to give them some space to breathe. They'll push out and look for ward. Supports will generally do this once they feel safe and they think you've left. Lulu steps up, we hit with slow, Q into an auto attack, get the jump resets. Now everyone's gonna die because we can continuously jump reset on top of their heads and then jump out and there's nothing they can really do about it. That's what makes Kha'Zix an insane 1v9 champion and it's why he's always viable regardless of the meta. Remember to, <clears throat> just remember to use your Q in midair whenever you're jumping because a lot of the times they'll flash away or dash away while you're in midair and things will get kind of weird in terms of running them down. So make sure if you are in range to Q while you're in midair, be tapping Q over their heads while you're flying around. That way you can maximize your damage and use your Q sooner 
and secure the kills. Even though all the enemies are dead, they're gonna be spawning in here shortly. So we take the turret, inhib, back off, and now we can get Dragon Soul to secure the win. Instead of trying to race down their base and take the final turrets and try to finish the Nexus as we're getting killed, might as well get the inhib, get Dragon Soul. And now, if we wanna do that base race, they can't fight us because we have Dragon Soul. You're in the driver's seat. Never put yourself in that position where you're racing down to the last auto attack on the turrets as they're hitting you and all of a sudden you die and they get your shot down gold. Never, ever, ever do that. I can see Nidalee's trying to take the flank to poke. So I pull outside of vision. She didn't see us. We hop over the wall, hit her with a Q auto attack and also get a nice AOE W which slows them down and makes our E reset that much juicier. Midair, we hit Lulu with a Q allowing us to use our Q even sooner. She does knock us out of the air. So immediately I pop R so they can't focus us down too hard. Right as invisibility is ending, I smack Lulu with an auto attack Q reset, use my jump set to try to get the Jin, but he gel forces in the opposite direction, end up finishing him off and their whole team goes down. Now we can take the Nexus with them having zero chance of resisting or stopping us and we're not risking our shutdown gold. For damage dealt to enemy champions, we had the most in the game and for damage taken, we almost took the most, which is crazy because obviously Kha'Zix isn't a tank. It just goes to show how strong Ravenous Hydra is and eclipses for healing and staying alive. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out a lot. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.